OK, well, welcome everybody. Um, thank you for agreeing to be a reviewer as part of this uh, RFP. This is for the Launch Minnesota Education Grants. Um, and today is going to be an opportunity to talk about the RFP itself and what we're hoping to accomplish with it, um, as well as go through how you evaluate these proposals, what steps you need to take, um, and then I will send you on your way and you're able to review at your own pace. Uh, these are going to be due, scores will be due back on October 13th. We have 11 proposals, so that's about three weeks to review um, those 11 proposals and get scores in. Um, and then we will make a recommendation to the commissioner for this. So to kick it off, um, we have a bunch of community reviewers that are a part of this. So I wanted to just do Quick round of introductions just to give everyone a chance to just say hello. Um, give us your name, your background, whatever job you might be doing or whatever experience you might have um, in the past with small businesses or entrepreneurs. And then let me know if you've um, ever been on a review committee before. Um, so my name is Paul Daniels. I am a program manager here at Deed and I am uh, overseeing the Launch Minnesota Education Grants, uh, among a number of others in my portfolio. Um, and I've done a couple review committees in the past, um, so I've got experience on what could go wrong, what will go wrong, <laughs> and just generally the process. Um, so I will hand it over to my colleague, uh, Julia, if you want to go next. Sure. Hi, uh, my name is Julia Olson. I am a grant specialist senior at DEED, and um, this is my first, I, I've just started about a month ago, so this is my first time doing the Launch Minnesota grants. Um, that being said, I used to run a grants program in Fort Worth, Texas for arts nonprofits, so very familiar with reviewing grants there, um, as well as I've, I've done some reviewing of grants for other foundations like the Rainwater Foundation. So. Um, but I'm excited to learn the particulars of this grant program, and uh, I'm excited to work with you all. Um, let's see, does Pat, or Pat, do you want to go next? Sure, I can go next. So my name is Pat Dillon, and I am the founder and president of a, a science and technology nonprofit called MNSBIR Inc., and we have a very good relationship with DEED and with Launch Minnesota in working with companies that are pursuing federal funding to support R&D and uh, commercialization of their technology. So I've been involved in the small business innovation world for over 30 years. I've been, you know, one of those, I guess, iconic people <laughs> in, the, in, the, in this environment. And so when Paul reached out and said, hey, Pat, you want to do this? I said, absolutely. And then, of course, I was at a conference and Neela was there. So it just made made all kinds of sense um, for me to do this. I've actually been a reviewer for some federal agencies, uh, the National Science Foundation, the uh, Department of Energy and the uh, uh, Department of Agriculture on uh, science and technology grants, but um, mm -hmm. so this is going to be new, but I, I'm looking forward to uh, contributing to this uh, important effort. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thanks. We're glad to have you. Um, Jeff, do you want to go next? I hope you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. All right, great. So, uh, um, my name is Jeff Reisinger. Uh, I have an undergraduate degree in entrepreneurship, uh, which is basically writing business plans and trying to figure out how to make businesses work. Uh, I spent about 12 years uh, consulting small businesses and nonprofits in the banking sector, and uh, uh, I did business taxes uh, for small businesses for about 10 years uh, with the IRS Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. Uh, I got a law degree about 10 years ago, and I've been working in commercial real estate since then, currently with uh, Minnesota Department of Transportation. And for about the last five years, I've been evaluating business plans in uh, competitions for University of St. Thomas students and graduates in both um, business and social enterprise. Uh, they have 
two business plan tracks there. So uh, happy to be participating. Thanks for having me. Yeah, glad to have you, Jeff. Thank you. Um, and then Emily, why don't you go next? Good morning, all. Thank you. Yes, I am also new to DEED on this team as a uh, grant specialist senior. And um, this will be my third committee reviewing grants. Um, and my background is in um, nonprofit, small business support. Um, I worked on the small dollar loan program, which was a federal funded program um, with uh, Women Venture. And I've worked at CRF and on the PVP loan. And Jeff, that's awesome to hear that you uh, participate with VITA. I was um a greeter at the vita site in washington dc for three years and just it, it was one of the most rewarding experiences um so i love that and i i need to look into the opportunities here locally so now that i live here anyways i'm looking forward to this i'm very familiar with the landscape of entrepreneurs and their resources locally in fact i at one point dabbled with the idea of participating in my own launch <laughs> uh competitive um uh, pitch so um yeah this is this is going to be great thank you awesome thanks emily welcome antonia uh we are just doing some brief introductions for um everyone's benefit um so if you wouldn't mind just say your name your background any experience you have working with um, small businesses or entrepreneurs and then if you've been on a review committee before all right is my mic on or not it is. We can hear. Sorry, it. I'm I'm not a Teams user. I'm a um, <laughs> always on Zoom, so I'm looking at this entire. Uh, so I volunteered because I um, am interested in just uh, contributing and doing some sort of. And I watched the um, newsletter come out from Deed, and so I thought that this would be a way to um, do some volunteer work and okay. review. I work at the university in the study abroad office in the learning abroad center and um, am the marketing director there. Um, I have a MBA from Carlson from 07. So um, that's the kind of business side of it. And I review a lot of scholarship applications um, and in my current role. So those are some I'm I'm a, a frequent reviewer of um, other types of applications. So this topic will be um, interesting and refreshing to do something different within that. So wonderful. We're glad to have you. Thank you for Thanks. volunteering. Uh, and then last, Maddie, if you're uh, there, I want to just do a brief introduction. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Paul. Hi, Maddie LeClaire. I'm the program specialist with Launch Minnesota, and in this capacity, I uh, maintain and create programs for Launch, and I help entrepreneurs make resource or make connections to resources, especially those uh, with organizations who have received Ed grants or are affiliated with these. Um, so, yeah, uh, very excited to be helping out with this uh, this year, and thank you to everyone on behalf of Launch Minnesota for volunteering your time to help us grade these proposals. We appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Mandy. All right. So I think we'll start diving into some of the content here. Um, this is being recorded, so I'll get it uploaded online and you'll be able to go back later if you want to. Um, but here we go. So what is Launch Minnesota? Uh, Launch Minnesota is a statewide network that supports entrepreneurs at um, every stage of their startup journey. The goal is to simplify the process and reduce barriers for entrepreneurs as they're navigating the pipeline of entrepreneurship and, and accessing the resources that the state has to offer. Um, we're hoping with this grant to increase the regional coordination and density and ultimately improve efficiency, equity, sustainability, and uh, make an impact uh, or help in the entrepreneurial support organizations make an impact with entrepreneurs. Specifically with this grant, because Launch Minnesota is a, a bigger program than just this grant, uh, but the objectives of the education grant program are really centered around networking and um, streamlining the, the pipeline of entrepreneurs uh, the accessing those 
um, resources. So increase the number of new business formation, um, support entrepreneurs and new business ideas. This is uh, aimed at bringing together organizations um, across their region, building on each other's strengths, supporting that network, um, improving coordination and capacity, um, helping people access the resources that are available to them, um, and streamlining the process of accessing those resources throughout the life cycle of their startup. To do this, we split it up into regions and the service area of each of these um, awardees should fall um, within a regional approach. We take a, a hub and spoke model is um, how to picture it really. There's gonna be a hub in each region and many partners associated with that hub in their region, um, but with one organization being the hub and taking the lead on it. Um, there may be a couple of statewide partners as well that are awarded through this, but ideally we'll have one hub uh, designated as the regional partner for each of the regions. It should line up uh, either perfectly or closely with the business development regions that we have established. You can see here Northeast, Northwest, West Central, Metro area, Southeast and Southwest. Um, it should be fairly evident in the proposals what their service area is. It's one of the questions we ask and you should be able to see um, where they would fit into this map or if they're um, trying to be a statewide partner and offering resources statewide, um, that would be listed as well. Here are the specifics of the grant. It's going to run from November 1st of this year through October 30th of 2025. Um, it is a two year cycle. We're hoping to give them the full two years to do this. Um, they are required to submit a timeline, so it should be clear how long they're intending for this to last. Um, certainly if they put a timeline that's longer than two years, that wouldn't quite fit with what we're doing. Um, if they get the dates wrong, for instance, had a starting date of September 1st or um, later than that, that's okay. We would work with them later on in the process to adjust the timeline to fit the this period of time, um, but it's important that they fit within the two year timeline. It doesn't need to be exactly two years, but it can't be longer than two years um, that they're gonna be running their, their grant period. The maximum award that any grant recipient can receive is $150,000, and that is split over two years. Um, we've got a million dollars available to us to fund grants, and we received about 1.5 million in proposals. So we do need to cut um, a couple of proposals or offer partial awards to a couple to um, fall within our limits here of 1 million. Um, my guess is we'll end up with about eight awards. Uh, might be more, it might be less. I think we had more than that in the last round. Um, we received 11 proposals this time, so eight feels fairly realistic to hit um, roughly that million dollar mark. But of course, this is this will fluctuate depending on the, the quality of the proposals and the specific dollar amounts that they asked for. The last uh, detail to know up front is that we require one-to-one -one matching with each of these grants um, and it must be in cash. It must be fully secured. Um, and so that is a requirement for each of these grantees. Yeah, go ahead, Pat. I think you're muted. There, there's no in kind um, allowed. Uh, you are allowed to include in kind and it can be evaluated as part of your proposal, but we are okay. requiring one to one matching uh, on top of it mm -hmm. all right and it can be any source it can non -state. or 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 it, it can't be state so state funding it has to Correct. be others other people's money okay exactly yeah I'll, I'll touch on that a bit later but it does need to be oh. non-state funding okay mm -hmm. thank you yeah absolutely um so to be eligible there is Pretty broad eligibility with this grant. It's any organization or public entity, including higher education institutions, um, as long as they have experience and success in providing educational programming to entrepreneurs and outreach to and collaboration with innovation stakeholders. So we're looking for really any organization or public entity that's got the right type of experience to do this work. Um, 
The reason I, I call this out so specifically is a number of grants D does has very uh, strict eligibility requirements, such as being a nonprofit or being a public entity, et cetera. So for this one, it is fairly broad and you could be um, a large number of organizations will be able to apply for it. Eligible uses. Um, so what can you use the grant funding for? It needs to be used to attract, support, and grow startups and to support the success of Minnesota's innovative high-tech businesses. Um, it can be done a number of different ways because that's fairly broad. Um, it could be through counseling in a classroom setting or um, teaching in a classroom setting, outreach about state programs and resources that are available. Um, it could look like collaboration with other organizations or hosting meetings, events um, with those other organizations, and a number of other things. This is just to give uh, a sampling of um, some of the general categories that you're going to see for activities that we would uh, consider as eligible uses. Um, there's a little bit more explanation on this in the RFP, which I'll send out um, so you can consult that as well. But um, there is a, a broad variety of eligible uses as long as they're focused on attracting, supporting, growing startups um, and collaboration in Minnesota. The budgets that you will see should be broken down uh, into these categories. These are um, the sort of line items that they're going to put together for their budget. So the um, eligible uses on the last page need to be condensed down into these specific categories of what we can actually reimburse them for. Um, two things to look out for is on the travel budget. Um, we prefer not to see that be the majority of the, the funding for it and certainly nothing out of state. Um, some travel is obviously going to be necessary and we can pay for things like mileage, um, a hotel room, meals, things that go into travel like that, that you might not necessarily um, immediately recognize as eligible. Those could be considered under travel. And the other thing to highlight for you is the um, administrative costs. Those are capped at 10%. The best way to think about the administrative costs is that those are indirect costs that are needed in order to um, carry out this grant. The direct cost, the specific work that is going to be done is going to fall under all of the other categories, but anything um, that they need, you know, uh, paying for copies, paying for HR or payroll support, these indirect costs that are necessary for an organization to function um, can be reimbursed as well as long as they're capped at 10 percent. They probably won't be discussed in detail um, too much in the proposals, but just be aware that that's going to be a part of uh, probably everybody's budget will have at least a bit of uh, administrative costs, if not the max. Great, moving along. This RFP uh, specifically, I want to highlight a couple things about it um, just to keep in mind. One of the big features of this is building a network to support entrepreneurs. So we've asked them to all submit a partnership matrix. It'll be a spreadsheet listing out exactly who they're going to work with. Um, it should be a pretty robust list. We didn't set any kind of minimum or sp specifics. You don't have to have any particular type of organization that you're working with, but higher scoring proposals should have more robust partnership lists and a wider variety of partnerships. We're looking for people that can act as connections um, that are pulling on numerous organizations to build a robust network. Uh, the lead applicant uh, for each proposal is also going to be the lead fiscal agent. Um, that's important as you're evaluating capacity and ability to carry out this grant. Um, the lead applicant is the one that will be receiving money from us and then distributing it if they are or will be spending the money um, on their own. And so that's something to take into account when you're evaluating the proposal. Uh, sources of match, um, as Pat pointed out, these need to be non-state dollars. We um, don't want someone to use another deed grant to be matched for this grant and then this grant is a match for another one and so on and so forth. We'd like to see outside dollars be leveraged um, as a part of this and, and brought in um, in addition to state dollars. That's the reason we have the one-to-one the -one match. Julia, do you have a question? 
Yes, I just wanted to double check. So I understand that mm -hmm. um, they need to be non-state. Is federal okay for matching? I believe so for this grant, yes. I'll double check that. I'm pretty sure it's just state dollars we're avoiding. Thank you. Absolutely. Right. Um, so as for what is the goal of the review process? What are we asking you to do um, as you're reviewing these proposals? Um, first and foremost, to remain objective. You are an unbiased um, reviewer of these proposals. Um, it's the purpose we send out the conflict of interest form and um, are looking for um, consistency throughout your review that you're bringing the same um, steps and and you're asking the same questions of each grantee. Um, we're looking to um, be accountable. These are state tax dollars that we're using. We want to put them to good use um, and ensure that the grants that we're funding are um, the right choice for this grant program and and for the use of these funds. Um, and we want to make sure it's competitive, that this is a, a fair process, that everyone gets a chance and gets reviewed and is scored um, appropriately, but that they have to work for it a bit and that there's a competitive element to this. Um, no one is guaranteed the funding. They need to put forth the best proposal um, and the best proposals will win out. So how do we do this? Um, in terms of evaluating the proposals, it's all going to be done on a 100 point scale. Every uh, proposal we receive will receive a score out of 100. I will take those from all of our reviewers, average them, and then put them in ranking order. Um, depending on what those scores are looking like, we may meet as a review committee and discuss the proposals. If there's a clear disparity between the best and the worst or a couple at the bottom that um, are not scored as highly as others, we may not need the meeting um, just based on the in fact, we only have 11. We only need to eliminate a couple in order to fully use our funding. Um, we may not meet, but if it's um, very close in scores, we will and we'll discuss to come up with a recommendation. Based on that recommendation, we, um, uh, myself, uh, the program staff here at Deed will present to the commissioner who ultimately gets the final say in what awards are given out. Um, they heavily pull on the recommendation that comes from this committee. Um, that's the purpose of convening it, uh, but ultimately all award decisions are final uh, from the commissioner. This is the breakdown of points for each proposal. Um, you can see the most important sections are given the more uh, a higher level of points for them, uh, but it totals up to 100 and you will be given a score sheet. Uh, I'll send that out after this meeting that will help you uh, with a number of questions in each section to help you break up the points, uh, decide how many to score in each area and, and ultimately lead to a final number out of 100. Um, these are some tips for how to actually go about that. My recommendation would be to skim it all first, get a sense of what are they proposing, what types of activities, how much are they asking for, um, how many entrepreneurs or small businesses are they proposing they're going to serve, just sort of these high level details to keep in mind as you then read through the full proposal. Um, you can score as you go, you can wait and do scores at the end. Um, there's a lot of, uh, it's really up to you how you want to approach this. Um, and finally, I would recommend to uh, go back and adjust if you feel as you read more and more proposals that you want to make a change on a previous one. That's completely fine. You can make changes um, as frequently as you'd like all the way up to um, the due date and, and up to the point where we need to make a recommendation to the commissioner. So uh, if we do end up hosting a review committee meeting, um, you could change them at the meeting. Maybe someone will have a a passionate speech for one proposal or another, and that will lead you to, to adjust it. That's completely fine. We want to ultimately come up with the recommendations. So some level of adjustment and and figuring this out as you are reading other proposals will be um, necessary. Some things to consider as you're evaluating these proposals. Um, the overall quality is important. Um, what does the proposal look like? Um, 
was a lot of effort put into putting it together, a lot of thought behind it, preparation uh, in actually putting together the proposal. Um, the impact, who are they serving? Uh, what what communities, what areas, what type of work are they offering? And uh, what services are they offering? How impactful is that going to be for their communities? Um, and finally, the, the likelihood of success. It may be a great sounding proposal, but if uh, they don't have the capacity to achieve it, or it seems unlikely that they would meet all of their goals, that would be something to consider as you're evaluating proposals. We want ultimately proposals that are going to turn into successful grants uh, in meeting the objectives of this grant. So how do you go about doing that? Um, I'd like to recommend um, starting in the middle, start with sort of a baseline set of points in the middle and then add points or subtract points as you see things um, come up when there's positives and and stuff you like about a proposal, adding points to it, moving up, um, subtracting points as you see see things that you you don't think are good. Um, you don't have to do it this way. Any way you can come up with uh, your points out of 100 is acceptable. This sort of uh, prevents lots of very high scoring proposals, lots of very uh, low scoring proposals, and ultimately uh, um, gives a little bit more in the middle, I guess. It, it's a very good proposal if it gets up towards 100. It's a very bad proposal if it gets down towards zero. By starting in the middle, you're, you're kind of um, preventing that from being the baseline. So where is it going to end up? Um, Proposals receiving 80 to 100% of the points, very good. Um, most likely should be funded, and I would assume you would recommend for funding. Somewhere in the middle, those 50 to 80% to of the points um, are more likely ones we're going to want to talk about, um, depending on how many fall in that range. Um, and if they're falling significantly below the 50% line, um, they're more than likely inadequate or not going to be uh, proposals we want to recommend. Uh, and this is just based on what I've seen from other review committees, um, where the points fall and how it all kind of shakes out, but could be completely different for this one. We will have to see. Um, high scores are for the very best, lowest scores are for the very worst. You'll see a lot in the middle. Those are the ones that we'll, we'll spend the most time on, most likely, um, and, and that is how we'll ultimately form the opinion. So, what does this look like? I'm going to send out uh, um, a link to our OneDrive folder where all the proposals are stored. Um, you can move through at your own pace in reviewing these proposals. I will also send out the RFP so you can read through exactly what each grantee uh, or each uh, proposal um, is based off of. Um, I'll send out the score sheets. And ultimately what I need you to return to me is a score summary it's a spreadsheet that's just going to have the number out of 100, um, one or two strengths or weaknesses, and your recommendation for do we award this one, do we not? Um, and so that's what I'm looking to actually receive back. You'll email that to me. Um, I don't need the individual score sheets. You don't have to send those in. Um, that is for your own note taking um, and keeping track of points as well as sort of following along with the questions that we've got. Um, and then I will compile that all and send out the the averaged numbers from it. Um, and that's what we'll base our recommendation on. Right. To wrap up, if you haven't submitted the conflict of interest form yet, you will need to do that before I send you out the link. Um, if you do have any conflicts, we can talk about it, but uh, more than likely you just won't review that proposal. Scores are due on October 13th, and if we want to schedule a, a review meeting after that, um, it'll be the following week. Are there any questions for me on this process? All right, perfect. Um, if you think of any questions, please reach out at any point during the process, um, you can email me and I will get back to you with an answer. Um, I'm also going to follow up this meeting with that link to the OneDrive folder, um, all the forms you would need to fill it out uh, and send it back in. Um, 
Yeah, thank you everyone for being willing to participate in this. I'm really looking forward to it. I think we have a lot of good proposals um, and we'll accomplish a lot through this program. Yeah, great, great presentation, Paul. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love I love the the organization. <laughs> you know, I'm like going, oh, he did that really good. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it, Pat. I pulled yeah. a lot from Brandon. So. Oh, yeah. Yes, OK. Was, All right. uh, his yeah. years of experience came in handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, very good. Yeah, well, I look thank forward you. to it and um, October 13th will be here very soon. <laughs> I know we have our team's got a couple review uh, review committees going on right now, so I think everyone's very busy, but yeah. I'm very grateful for everyone being willing to help out with this and and get us a solid recommendation. Sure. All right. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye.